How's it going, guys? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions. Thank you guys again for joining us for another live stream. And I hope um, this title, so I put the stock market is closed. Um, today it's Saturday um, and it's the 1st of July. But I actually had the understanding. I just took a flight that was like 13 hours from Spain, uh, Barcelona, here to LAX. Um, so I was confused on the time and I was getting everything ready like I normally do during pre market hours uh, for my live stream. And then right as I open my TD Ameritrade and I start like scanning for stocks, nothing pops up because it has to do with volume. And I was just like, what the heck is going on? Um, and then I checked the time and um, I usually don't sleep so early. I slept like um, very well last night. So I was super pumped to get started for today's market open. Uh, but then understanding that it was actually Saturday and the market's not open during the weekend um, was kind of upsetting. But I thought I was already going to go live. Um, I was like, oh, what the heck? Like I shared the link and then I realized this. Um, so I hope I have your guys' attention. Um, but if you guys don't know, I mean, we have a group. It's Tech with Solutions. We're a little bit over twenty six thousand five hundred members worldwide. And the thing that we do best is we provide a very you know supportive and welcoming environment for, for both new and experienced members. I I thought I'd take advantage of this time um, to answer some commonly asked questions um, within the group that I already have set up. Um, so if you guys have any questions or suggestions that you guys um, want to um, ask, feel free to ask within the live stream. So I have a couple of people commenting right now um, saying that I should just get some rest. I'm like super pumped and I'm super excited and um, I'm, I'm just so glad to be back in the States and I'm eating cereal with like nice cold milk and that's not very common in Spain. Um, I'm super excited because I'm going to be eating like Raising Cane's if you guys know what that is and Brooksy's and um, Mexican food and I'm, I'm just super pumped to be back in the States and now I'm going to be in the same um, time. Uh, time frame as, as you guys so I'm not gonna be like eight nine hours ahead I um, mean that was very frustrating just because I couldn't um, really answer your guys' questions when you guys were up so I was falling behind with a lot of questions um, so I want to say good morning to all of you guys I want to start off by um, <laughs> um, I wanted to start off by just answering some questions that I think can be very useful for a, b a bunch of new traders. Um, so I hope that are, um, those that are joining us for the first time can benefit actually from this video. Um, and then let me just go ahead and get this started. So um, one of the, <coughs> excuse me, um, one of the, um, a common question um, that I, or a, a question that I received, and I'm not gonna disclose any names um, just so I can keep the privacy there. Um, but pretty much um, one of the, these questions were, um, so he asked me, um, I've been trading for almost two months. I have a lot of money in ETFs at the moment. And based on this past week, ETFs are currently down. So my overall account is currently down. How do I stay positive even um, when you have, you know, lost all your profit? You know, not the principal, but let's say, for example, what I think is, you know, um, suggesting is like let's say you started with a thousand dollars you've been trading for two months you're up you know one thousand five hundred dollars regardless of what you're up um, and then you put all your money in ETFs and based on current ETFs like if the gold based ETFs and they're down for the week um, let's say you gave up all those five hundred dollars so you still have your principal one thousand dollars but the past two months of work um, are completely gone like how do you deal with that well I want to I want to start off by saying that um, I'm just going to be sharing my best practices and what's kind of led to my success when it came to day trading or comes to day trading. So I want to start by saying that it's amazing that within the first two months that you've been able to see profit because you have to understand that if it's your first two months, not a lot of people see profit within that time frame. So you're already in a sense, you know, above the curve. Now understanding that you're currently taking a loss. Um, I'm guessing with some swing trades since you're holding these um, and you're taking a loss and you're in a sense. How do you? Um, the, the main question was like, um, how do you, you know, stay positive um, during the week when you're having such such a bad, you know, experience with the market within the past week? Um, I think that you need to understand when it comes to trading, there's always this form of risk, um, and the best way that I've been able to deal with it, especially from when starting out to where I am today, one of the best practices that I can share, and although it is very easily in a sense not practiced by a lot of people especially new traders is the importance of cutting losses um, so although you're up and although you've made this amount of money you have to understand that when it comes to investing you have to get in the mindset of being able to cut losses and being able to understand that you know not in every trade you're going to be able to make money so already when placing that trade 
get into the understanding of, you know, if you're investing a thousand dollars and you want, you know, a, a 1% risk, um, and that's your max loss and kind of think of those $10 to be already be gone. So when it comes down to having to cut losses, you don't have to go through that whole, just, um, just mind game of like, well, no, I'm kind of hoping that it goes back up to at least sell for where it was. And then when it goes back up to where it was, you're going to be like, Oh, well, let me just try to see if I can actually sell it for a profit. And then it, has a pullback and then it takes back down. Like I've been in those shoes and I completely understand, but you have to understand that when it comes to investing, you should always have a plan. And one of the best suggestions that I can have um, or give out when it comes to trading, you should always have a plan on, just like we always say, where you're going to be buying, where you're going to be selling and where you're going to be cutting your losses. You should always have an entry, exit and cut losses, like point put like in your head before you actually buy stock. The reason I say that's so important is because if the stock doesn't go according to plan, like you're currently trading and like you're currently down, you would have just been down 1% or you know a, a small amount, maybe like you know, out of the year $1,500 account, if that's your account value, you'd have been down just you know $15 instead of $500 down to the principal because you would have cut losses right away and then you could have moved on to a stock that could have done so much better. But you have to get into the habit of understanding that you know, not all your positions are always going to you know, trend back up. And that's probably one of the best practices that um, within the Tech Build Solutions community that I think everyone sees eye to eye um, is the importance of cutting losses and understanding you know, how quick you have to be to cut losses regardless of what you think is going to happen because of what's actually happen, uh, happening. You have to make sure that the graph does the talking and that you just in a sense are the executor that you know what, um, that, you know you buy where you believe that it's going to do well um, based on trends and you sell where you think it's going to sell based on trends and you cut losses based on what you have set up as your max loss and stuff like that. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and I'll go ahead and let you know that I, that I answered your question within this live stream. Um, another question is, um, I almost said his name, um, is saying, uh, I'm currently down $40 on my $300 account. I get consistent red days. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, do you have any tips for me? Um, I could really use them. So um, this is, and again, more for people that are experiencing um, red days. So. I've been in those shoes as well, especially in my very um, like early age of starting out uh, when I was trading. I'm just consistent red days, and sometimes those red days are even you know um, big. They're big losses sometimes because when you initially start out, um, I feel like a lot of people focus on low cap stocks, so stocks less than maybe even fifty cents per share. And you have to understand that if you're losing you know five cents per fifty cents, you're losing ten percent, and that's ten percent of your overall count, and that can be very discouraging. One of the best things that I can, I'm going to give like two different types of advice. Um, and the first one is if you're already experiencing, if you just started trading or you've been trading for a while, but you've been experiencing consistent red days and the monetary risk or the monetary loss that you're taking every single day that you keep losing money is something that is discouraging you from trading, then obviously the money that you have in your account is more than you're able to cope with. So you have to maybe move it over to a paper trading account, which means simulation. Um, account which is fake money. TD Ameritrade offers an amazing platform. It's 100% for free. You do have to be a United States resident, so that's the only drawback if you don't live within the United States. Um, but what I want to suggest is if you don't have the fundamentals, you know, investing in stocks that are losing money and you don't and you haven't found your niche yet, don't force trade with real money. Don't make things happen and don't start risking more money uh, to try to you know, make back your losses. You have to understand that it does take some time and sometimes it takes a lot longer for other people to, in a sense, understand how to invest. But the best way to do it is if you see that you keep losing money and you, see, and you can't, in a sense, identify what you're doing wrong, then you have to understand that maybe I should take a step back, open a paper trading account, which doesn't you know, risk any money um, or doesn't cost me anything. And then with that, I can trade real stocks with real time quotes and I don't have to risk any money, but I gain all the real experience. That's my first suggestion. I want to make sure that I get you guys in the right direction. So therefore, the best way to stop risking money and to stop losing money is to open an account that can still allow you to gain all the real experience when it comes to trading, but no monetary risk. So that's the first thing. It's TD Ameritrade paper trading. Google it. I made a video on it and I've provided a link um, for that specific topic. Now, the second thing that I can suggest is that I feel like a lot of people do focus on very low cap stocks. Um, and doing that, these low cap stocks, as in more true penny stocks, 
are something that I don't even uh, primarily focus on. I personally try to stay away from any stock less than a dollar. And the reason that I do that is because I've seen more loss than success when it comes to trading those low cap stocks. So I tend to focus on stocks about $1 to $1 um, to $15, um, well, $15, but um, even sometimes up to $30, depending on how much it is that I want to risk. So understanding that, you know, the smaller the cap is, the higher risk that it has. Try to, in a sense, find your niche, or if you're still having trouble, you know, and you don't want to do paper trading, and you're still having trouble, you know, like identifying a support, identifying a resistance, identifying where to cut losses, and you want something that might move a little bit slower, start investing, um, or something that I uh, that I would do um, is that I would start investing in stocks that are maybe you know fifty dollars or more. Um, and doing that, when it comes down to losing that same ten percent, um, you have to lose in the sense instead of you know the five cents and you're already at a loss, you have to lose like five dollars for a fifty dollars stock um, to be down you know five percent, uh, ten percent. So in doing that, it's and and these you know higher price stocks don't tend to you know move as much as these lower price stocks. So it's going to be easier for you to identify you know an entry point, identify a sell point, and identify a place where you can stop losses. Um, or stop your uh, or cut losses um, in doing that it's going to be just a lot easier for you to plan out your trade you know stick to your plan and you can actually learn at your own pace so I mean kind of focusing um, I would personally focus more on stocks that are might maybe a little bit higher price you still want to make sure you stick to the basics of identifying potential identifying the support resistance and where you're going to cut your losses um, but now it's going to in a sense be instead of day trades the most likely might have to be swing trades or even if you want to day trade them again just within the past maybe three to five days, look at the, in a sense, trends, um, see the low points, see the high points, see if it's trending up. Um, one of the biggest um, suggestions is a lot of people try to always buy a stock at the lowest point um, when it sees a pullback. <clears throat> I think I could actually just share my, my screen for this. Um, let me start sharing my screen. And um, this is pretty much what, uh, Sorry about that. Um, this is pretty much what I want to show you guys. So let's say it's like JNUG, right? Um, let's say JNUG is a stock that actually, um, the one that I was looking at was Save, and it's Spirit Airlines. Um, oh, and it actually bounced out where I thought it was going to bounce. So um, let me talk to you guys about um, Spirit Airlines. Again, it's not a penny stock. It's a you know actual multi-million dollar company. It's an airline, and the reason I ran into this one was um, just because I, I heard some news about it. I've used them before when it came to taking some flights from Phoenix to um, LX and I tend to search a lot of companies that I you know like discover I don't know it's just something that I like doing um, as a pastime like um, if I use a certain company that I think might have you know might be traded publicly and I just search them up see for their um, search for their ticker symbol and then start looking them um, up and then I add them to my watch list I actually started using um, Spirit Airlines right before this huge dip right before this huge spike so man I missed out um, but Pretty much what I want you guys to focus on is within this area right here. Um, and really, <clears throat> this area. So when it comes to trading a little bit more at your own pace, you have to understand the stock is trading at $51 right now. Um, what I saw yesterday is, and I called it out during our or within our group chat of TechBud Solutions, is I saw that it had a previous support, so it used to bounce at $52 and have a resistance at about $53. What does that mean? Well, there's a percentage profit for almost about 3%. Again, not huge percentage, but it's easy for me to identify because of these previous supports and resistance, a good buy point and a good sell point and a good point where I can cut losses or where whatever your max loss is, if that's like, you know, 2% or whatever it is. You know, have a plan. You have to understand that you should have to stick to the basics, but understand that when it breaks the support, it becomes a new resistance and then you have to wait for the bounce. And it did that. So about two days ago, um, so I'm guessing Thursday it bounced at about you know fifty one dollars. So let's say like fifty one twenty. It bounced at fifty one twenty, and then the resistance became fifty two dollars. Again, the margin for profit isn't huge, but again, you don't want to focus on how much the most amount of money you can make at the very beginning when it comes to trading. But you want to focus on making sure that you're buying at a good point and selling at a good point and getting the basics down. So what I would suggest is um, identifying the support was at 51 um, 20 and again I did that based on the previous trend so yesterday when this thing had a pullback because it was at its resistance so it was more oversold so again buy point sell point so people understand that and the resistance was strong it saw a pullback and then it started bouncing and holding above 51 18 what I would have done was does that mean when it has a huge drop like it did here that you're supposed to buy there not necessarily especially not when starting out if you identified 5120 as a support, 
and then it sees a pullback and then it starts to come back up, usually what I say is try to buy it at the bounce. So I'm going to go back to one minute um, candlesticks. So what I personally would have done is it's having this whole, full pullback, right? And then it went down to, you know, $50 and um, 90 cents pretty much. And then it started coming back up. 51.20 was the, the place that it previously bounced and it might become a resistance. So understanding that once it breaks above 51.20, that could almost identify itself as a good buy point. It climbed back up. It saw a you know, downward trend again, but look, the second time it's holding a, above, you know, at least 51.10 and it's starting to trend back up. So instead of investing your money on something that's losing money, how about wait for the bounce, identify a critical point, and then when it breaks above that critical point, let's say 51.20, then you make the decision to start investing because it's starting to show signs of upward momentum. Um, now you've identified, in a sense, you know, a support. You've identified that it's bounced and you identify now that it's rising up. So now it's meeting certain criteria that you've, in a sense, um, have come up with when it comes to investing in stocks that are appreciating in price. And then you sell at, you know, where you believe at $52 or whatever it is, um, because that makes sense. And you're not just hoping for the best, but you understand based on previous trends that $52 is a resistance. So you plan to sell at $52. $52. It's bouncing at $51.20. So it's just a lot easier when you, in a sense, identify the potential um you, you plan out your trades on where you're buying where you're selling and where you're getting the losses make sure that you invest especially when starting out that you don't try to jump into stocks that you don't understand don't try to jump into a stock and buy it at the lowest price when you don't even understand that if it's actually going to bounce at that point something i always try to do especially with pullbacks which is what that is when it starts dropping in price especially during market open you see a bunch of companies start experiencing pullbacks as you wait for the bounce you see if that's a critical point or a previous support. And then once it breaks above that support, then you can plan out your trade. Okay, well, I'm going to buy here. I'm going to sell back at where it was at the resistance. So I'm going to buy at support, sell at resistance, and then I'm going to cut my losses if it drops below that $50.89 or whatever that you know um, bounce was. Because if it drops below that price, then it might continue trending downward. And you don't want to invest or hold a stock that is experiencing a downward trend. So I hope I didn't prolong that whole answer. Um, but let's see if I can... Um, okay, so um, Stephen Dorsey is asking, um, define critical point. I just identify critical point. There's a, there's a lot of like breaking points. It, it comes down to what it is that you want to call it. Um, but identify critical point, um, let's say for, oh, I called it out on JDST. JDST, its critical point was like $64. Um, and it, when it broke above $64, it like spiked up uh, because that was a very strong resistance. It's kind of like... Um, like I showed you with even just save. So that was Spirit Airlines. Um, it had a previous support at $52, but it dropped all the way down to, um, or the support was at $51.20 resistance at 52, but it dropped all the way down to 50.89. So again, you don't try to buy it at the lowest price. You identify that 50, 51.20, since that was a previous balance, it was a previous support. You wait for the stock price to start trending upward and to break above that previous support meaning that it's trending upward um, from the actual bounce, in a sense, showing you that it's actually trending upward and not just, you know, I don't, I, I hope that that makes sense. So like, you know, you wait for the bounce and then you try to identify a, a breaking point or a previous support because if it breaks above that support, um, then because it fell below that support, it becomes a new resistance, but if it breaks right above it, then it broke that critical point or it broke above that resistance, whatever it is that you want to call it, um, and then it starts trending upward. So it's in a sense just a, a point that at least identifies to you that the stock is trending up and that it's breaking resistance that you know it might have not broken um, or broke if it wasn't you know going to continue trend, uh, trending upward. So I hope that makes sense to you. I hope I didn't confuse you. Um, Leon is asking me, Ricky, are you still in Spain? No. Um, if you this video will post in just a little bit. Um, I actually came back to the states. Um, I'm in California right now, visiting my parents. All right. So um, now I wanted to answer. Let's see. Oh, there's actually one on YouTube. There's a comment. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna kind of end it here. Um, I'm gonna talk about one more because it was one that was suggested within the Tech Solutions group chat. So I apologize I didn't do that one. Um, but it was about DCTH and um, 
why I personally don't invest in stocks like DCTH that I believe are overhyped. I'm not much of a momentum trader, and I um, the reason I say that is because I see more success when it comes to my trading um, on technical trades, meaning identifying like support resistance and buying low, selling high, and cutting losses and sticking to that, rather than momentum trading is more based on volume, more based on hype. And we have Connor within TechBot Solutions, so he's within my YouTube channel. He's one of the um, future channels, so make sure you search him up. If you're a momentum trader, those are more like breakout stocks and stuff like that. I don't see much success when it comes to trading those. I see more success when it comes to trading technical um, or with my technical trades. Um, so that's why I don't necessarily trade DCH, uh, DCTH. That's one of the first reasons. Also, DCTH, it's less than, it's less than $1. Um, so, you know, it doesn't meet that criteria. Um, and then it started at like one cent and then it started trending up to 35 cents and then it saw a huge drop So you can see that it's a pump and dump and a lot of people overhype it And I don't like that because it's very hard to predict You know where you're buying where you're selling and where you're gonna have to cut your losses And you might have be having to cut losses a lot more often than to lock in profit So those are the reasons I don't focus on those lower cap stocks that see a lot of manipulation um, And it comes down to understanding that I'm not I don't want to say that I'm not here to make the most money because um, that's definitely, I don't think that's something that I necessarily want to, in a sense, lead by. Um, but I want to make sure that I, I make money by, you know, what I understand and I make money um, at my own pace and at my own risk. Um, so I'm when it comes to being a technical trader, I like managing my risk. And even though I might be investing $3,000, $5,000, 10000 30000 whatever it is, I don't invest that much um, per position. Um, but I've had like $12,000 um, at one time, you know, invested at, you know, with my Fidelity account. But it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm investing the full $12,000. I always have a stop loss that I always can manage my risk when it comes to per trade. And I don't like risking more than 2%. You know, if I lose more than 2% on a position, I just cut my losses and move on to the next one. And it's just something that I, I just get into the habit of doing that. You have to become, I think, based on my own experience, a little bit more systematic when it comes to, you know, letting your emotions not come into play when it comes to trading and just analyzing stocks, identifying the potential, setting up a plan, and then sticking to that plan. So where you're buying, where you're selling, and where you're going to cut your losses. Um, and that's really just it. That's why I don't focus on low cap stocks. The thing that I want to um, get to now is, <clears throat> oh, what's the name of the momentum trader in TechBot Solutions? Is it, um, Taylor Reed is asking this. Um, so if you go into my YouTube channel, his name is Taylor um, man, I don't know. It's like Coley phone. Um, he's one of the future channels. So if you go on my YouTube channel on the right hand corner, it says team and Connor, uh, Polo phone is like the first one that's up there. And then Bradley Smith is the second one, which is another, um, trader within tech, but solutions. He focuses on OTC stocks. Um, so reach out to him if you want to focus on that. So thank you for asking that question. Um, so the last thing that I want to talk about, and I want to thank you guys for you know joining us for the, this whole time, is a, a very common question is because I'm personally moving away from my $1,000 challenge with Robinhood. I told you guys to focus and, and to continue you know using a brokerage company that you believe in, regardless of what it is that I choose to use. In no way does that have to influence you know what you guys have to use. Uh, so and and saying that, a lot of people came down to the conclusion or to the question of like, okay, well, what brokerage company you know should I start using, um, and you know why? I've made a specific video talking about you know how to pick your brokerage company. If you guys haven't watched that, but I'll give you guys a quick summary. So when it comes to trading, um, I'll just give you a quick breakdown. Fidelity charges a four dollar and ninety five cent commission. TD Ameritrade charges a six dollar and ninety five um, cent commission. Robinhood does not charge anything when it comes to trading. Now I love the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform, um, and that's why I use them. Um, so I can see um, just real time quotes, and I think they have a really nice layout, especially when it comes to using my MacBook. Um, Six ninety five isn't super expensive, um, so you could use it for that. But I personally use Fidelity when it comes to executing my trades. They have lower commissions. I was um, from the very beginning um, brought up with that specific. Um, brokerage company so I just started using them and they are started offering very low commissions and that's why I use them um, and they're a very reputable company so they're very easy to talk to very easy to work with they're always willing to go out of your way and it's very easy to get in contact with them so I would recommend them in that case when it comes to customer service like loyalty um, and when it comes to execution they're very quick um, and they want to get things done and, and that's amazing for a brokerage company because you want to make sure and 
what, when you're investing that you can reach out to someone and you know get that done. Now with my experience with Robinhood, again, I don't want to subjugate or minimize anything. Um, I've made numerous videos talking about my experience with them. If you guys haven't watched it already, just put Robinhood and then Ricky um, on your YouTube search bar and then I'll be popping up. But um, I want to make sure that I talk about Robinhood on all they do get. So, you know, commission-free training. They offer an amazing, simple platform um, that's very easy in a sense to use, especially for millennial traders that, you know, are always using their smartphone. Um, but um, what is the what is the price you pay for, you know, no commissions? Well, um, very delayed, you know, just quotes, very delayed. Um, just, I, I say like, um, in my experience, even when it came to trading when I had over $30,000, um, but even more when I went down to the $1,000 challenge, um, I almost experienced like very delayed just execution. So uh, it took a while to get executed, not always at the price that I wanted to. Every time that I tried to sell, I wouldn't always get filled, but my Fidelity account would get filled because I would use both accounts to trade. Um, it just wasn't a good experience. And when it comes out to contacting them, uh, they always try to fill to you through an email-based support. And they tell you wait 20 or 48 to 72 hours which is an extremely long time, especially if you're trying to execute a trade. Now, I have their number and I've posted their number numerous times within the, my videos, so feel free to reach out to them. Um, and then they actually have brokers that can execute or actually put, um, you know, execute trades for you. Um, but it takes forever to get in contact with them. Sometimes you're on hold for like over an hour um, and it's not even worth it. So they're, you know, they're a very small company when it comes to all these massive just um, other brokerage companies and they don't have necessarily the capital like they do uh, when, when it comes down to you know being able to hire all these you know services so i 100 percent understand that but when it comes to investing is that something that you know i want to in a sense showcase my following to when they, i have had a bad experience and that's why i'm moving away from Robinhood, just because although they do offer a very good alternative for people that want to start trading and don't want to pay commissions because they might not have the most money to get started um also talking about the importance of you know I mean, it's for the price you pay per commission, but you'll, in a sense, experience, I think, a whole different, you know, experience when it comes to using these different brokerage companies. So I think you have to ask yourself when it comes down to these three brokerage companies that I'm specifically talking about, is that do you want to have, you know, with TD Ameritrade, they have a very responsive, like, you know, um, company. So they have a good contact. Um, they don't execute as often um, or as accurately or as quickly, I think, based on my experience when it comes to uh, Fidelity. Um, but they have an amazing platform. So that's, that's in a sense, the pros for uh, TD Ameritrade Fidelity. Um, you have to pay for actual, like, um, a live platform. So I don't necessarily like that, but I think they're an amazing company when it comes to getting in contact with them. And when it comes to execution and costs, um, very low cost for what it is that you're getting. Um, and then with Robinhood, um, you know, no cost, but then I think just um, delayed quotes, um, delayed execution, um, and delayed responses. So it's just kind of more like if you're really starting out and just want to get the basics, that might be the company that you might want to start off with. But when it comes to having like one to $10,000 in your brokerage company uh, and you're making, you know, you're seeing success when it comes to day trading, uh, you might want to move your funds over to a commissionable you know, company that can actually, you know, allow you and assist you a little bit more uh, with the growth that you're trying to see within the year. So um, it's as simple as that. Um, other than that, I, I just wanted to make a video kind of taking advantage of this time. Um, so I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. And I apologize that if I woke some of you guys up, it is pretty early here in California. It's not that early. It's 6.58 a.m. Um, so you guys are saying um, we should get together. Um, I don't have my car here, but I'm sure I can borrow um, someone's car here uh, when it comes to being here in California. So if you guys want to meet up and if you guys are in California, uh, let me know. I'm just going to be here for today. I do have a couple things that I have to work on. I'm reaching out with my developers um, and stuff like that for the platform. So I might have to head on over there. And then my real estate agent, I do have to get in contact with him as well. So I have a good amount of things that I have to do back in Arizona. Um, but that, that that's really just today. I'm really back, glad to be back in the States and I'm really looking forward to this upcoming week because I've missed out on a couple of days when it came to day trading because of my whole traveling thing. So um, Hacker Beats is saying coffee time at Bray Mall. Message me, direct message me. If you guys are really wanting to meet up, direct message me within the TechBud Solutions group chat. And again, if you guys aren't a part of TechBud Solutions, the link is provided for you down below. Um, we have a little bit over 26,500 members now worldwide. So once you get accepted to the Facebook group and you simply have to have a Facebook account to join, um, again, that's the link down below. Um, on the top pinned post are the series of group chats. Feel free to join that and then you can direct message me um, within that, um, within that uh, group chat. Um, and then we'll, we'll 
um, hopefully meet up. So thank you guys again for all your time. Um, I'm probably going to, if you guys saw yesterday's video that I uploaded um, in the airport, it was very bad quality based on what I received, the feedback that I received. It knows how to set up the best penny stock scanner. Um, and there's a very simple way on how I set up. It's kind of like a pre-market transient scanner. Um, I'm going to try to make another video on that and kind of just re-upload it for you guys. That's like HD and better quality. So I apologize for the inconvenience of it being such low quality. Um, but that's it. So um, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Just um, you know, take advantage of this time that you guys might have off um, to continue learning and continue networking with one another. So sharing best practices and sharing mistakes um, and preparing for this upcoming week. So uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Um, and that's going to be Sunday, which is going to be our Sunday stock talk. Um, and then that's pretty much just going to prepare us for this upcoming weekend. We do that every single week. Um, so if you guys can like and subscribe, you know, we greatly appreciate it. But most importantly, just make sure that you guys continue sharing um, your best practices and sharing your mistakes. If you guys want to do that in the comment section, uh, just simply comment what's led to your success when it came to trading or any specific avenue or market that you've invested in. So I want to thank you guys again all for joining us. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on green note. Take care, guys.